Welcome fellow gamers, my name is Tim Mao, and in today's video I'm going to review the monster of a gun, the RPK-16. That is the most recent addition that the update 2.2.2 brought to battle. We are going to explore the stats of this gun, how good this gun is in comparison with the guns of the same archetype, and some attachments that you can use with the RPK-16. But before diving into this Thanos erasing people of a weapon, I just want to say two things. First, I really want to say thank you to all of you that have left a comment, like and dislike in my last video, and gave precious feedback and helped with ideas to improve my videos, and I will keep creating more videos and improving what I can improve. So, thank you very much, fellow gamers. The second thing that I want to talk is that this new update had a major impact on how you play this game, in a very good way. It's like if the devs just push the reboot button, but you are going to push that like button after seeing this video, and the game changed completely. Now the game feels more fluid in the gameplay department, all due to the changes that the devs made to the bandaging system, allowing all players to have a fast bandaging time and increasing the amount of bandages that each player has from the start, making the gamers not being forced to use the medic class to survive longer. Yes, the medic class in some ways was nerfed, but at the price of giving the players 4 more usable classes, that by all means are also important to create a more diverse and interesting game. Not only the bandaging system was the key to improve the game, but also all the other changes like for example the skin system that was completely reworked. And as everybody knows, better skins give more kills. No, I'm joking. Of course that skins don't impact the gameplay, but it gives something for you worth playing for. An additional objective for those that like to customize their characters. And are these little but big changes that the devs make that make this game every update more awesome? But let's stop talking about this amazing update that I already made a video about it that you should definitely give it a look and let's talk about this RPK-16 or like I call it the Eraser of Souls. First, let's give it a look to the base stats of the RPK-16. As a damage profile of 32, that it's a normal damage for the LSG or Light Support Gun class. Next, we have the vertical recoil of 1.4 and an horizontal recoil of 0.85. Yes, the vertical recoil is high, but the horizontal recoil of 0.85 makes that this gun has almost no horizontal recoil that in principle is the most difficult recoil to control, and because there's almost no horizontal recoil, this gun is a laser beam, a laser beam that slaps you in the face with 32 damage up to 100 meters. After the 100 meters range mark, the effects of the damage fall off begins, reaching the lowest damage possible of 9.6 at 300 meters, but giving a weapon 32 damage at 100 meters with almost no horizontal recoil, we already have a good start. Next, we have the bullet velocity of 600 meters per second, quite normal for its class and even lower than some other guns with the same archetype like the AK-74 or the M4A1. Next, we have the accuracy of 70, once again quite normal for this type of gun, but is the lowest accuracy of its class. A fire rate of 680 bullets per second that is not bad, it sits in the middle place for its class. And again, in comparison with other guns with the same profile, is more or less the same. An ADS speed of 0.24, running speed of 0.98, with a reload time of 4 seconds. And again, it stays in the middle of place for its class. And more or less the same for other guns with the same profile. This gun has a 45 bullet mag that is just huge mag capacity for his class, and even more in comparison with other guns with the same profile. And finally, the RPK-16 has a TTK of 276 milliseconds, that is really good, but again, it's in the middle place for his class. 
The RPK-16 needs 4 shots in the chest to kill an unarmored enemy and 3 shots in the head to kill an unarmored enemy. Of course, you need to land those 3 shots in the head, but if you can pull off the 3 shots in the head, the TTK is going to be 184 milliseconds. Again, slightly lower than the AK-74, 193 milliseconds. So help after me, help seeing me. the stats of this gun, nothing screams overpower gun right away. So why all the Thanos jokes and the nickname Eraser of Souls? Well, there is two factors that contribute for all the hype around this gun and why it feels so good when you use it. It's like this gun fires infinity stones, blowing everything on its path. And after an intensive analysis on the combination of stats of the RPK-16, I have reached this conclusion. First factor is the RPK-16 is like a slight better version of the AK-74. The RPK-16 has more damage per bullet, more bullets per mag, a better TTK and more fire rate. But in reality, the difference is tiny between those weapons. But like the butterfly effect, not the movie of course, the combination of low horizontal recoil and a lower fire rate makes this gun more accurate. And to compensate the lower fire rate, the RPK-16 has a little more damage. And the sherry on top of the cake is the 45 round mag. In the end, the 45 mag is the most OP stat in this gun. Imagine a low horizontal recoil, higher damage gun with the 45 bullets that you can have the luxury of missing a couple of shots and still have enough bullets to keep going without reloading. Well, that is the Eraser of Souls. Sorry, I mean the RPK-16. The only big downside of the RPK-16 is the reload time of 4 seconds. You can start reloading and go to take a shower that probably I need after playing 24 hours straight and come back to finally have the gun ready to go. But it's normal to have this reload time or else the gun would really be a overpower gun. And to be sincere, the 4 second reload time doesn't bother me too much because the TTK of this gun and the 45 bullet mag you will have no problem in managing your mags. And the second factor that contributes for the feeling that this gun is OP is the placebo effect. No, not the music band of course, but the effect that the sound of this gun firing does to your brain. Because this gun has the best firing sound of all the guns in battle. Listen to this. And because this gun has a strong sound, it makes you feel like this gun does more damage than in reality. The only gun in Battlebeat that gives the same sensation is the M2000 sniper rifle. With all that said, I don't think that the RPK-16 is an overpowered gun and I don't think that it needs to be nerfed in any way. It's just a slight better version of the AK-74 and sounds like the 4th of July every time that you pull the trigger. So now let's see some attachments that I'm using. For the magazine, I'm using the 45 mag. I don't think that using the drum with a capacity of 60 bullets will help because the 45 mag already feels like the bullets never end. And if you use the 60 round mag, you will increase the vertical and horizontal recoil and the reload time by 1.33 seconds. And I don't think that is going to be a good trade-off. For the side rail, the only thing that I see that I could use is the new attachment, the target detector. Everything else, I don't see any important improvement for the gameplay or the stats of the gun. For the under rail, I'm using the BCM Gunfighter. It gives a nice boost to the horizontal recoil without impacting too much the other stats. The only downside is the vertical recoil is increased by 0.22. But like I said before, the vertical recoil is the less difficult recoil to master than the horizontal recoil. The only under rail that I could recommend besides the BCM is the B25 ERC for the reload speed increase of 0.36 seconds and only if you don't mind the extra horizontal recoil. For the barrel, I'm using the VAMP 762 because the extra bullet velocity of 42 
Always nice to have, especially for those mid-range engagements. The increased accuracy of 1.8, that is always good to have. And yes, it does increase the vertical recoil, but it doesn't change the horizontal recoil that we want to stay low. The only barrel that I still could recommend is the suppressor long. Yes, it will increase the horizontal recoil by 0.10, but it will also give more bullet velocity by 60 meters per second and accuracy by 1.8. And we finally reach the end of this amazing journey with the RPK-16. Once again, thanks for all the support and if you like this video, please leave it a like and if you don't like it, a dislike. That will help this channel find more people interested on Battlebit. And if you don't want to miss future content, please consider to subscribe to the channel. And like always, I will see you on my next video, but until then, have a nice day, good gaming, Dune Mountain out.